Why is sleep essential for our health and how do we get better sleep? I became really interested in sleep as a performance enhancer when during my early and mid 40s, I was focused on winning races and becoming the best triathlete that I could be. And it really worked well. That's why I'd like to share with you some of the things that work for me to increase my energy, my productivity, fitness and all that good stuff. And I wanna share with you how I did it. However, like most people, I have had times in life when I haven't slept well, but apart from being annoyed about it, I didn't really know what to do. Because in my five years of medical school training, I can't remember being taught a single thing about sleep. My knowledge on improving sleep came from listening to lots of health podcasts, working with coaches and doing online courses, but mostly from these books over here. And these provide an evidence-based approach from world-renowned sleep experts. And yes, there is such a thing. Please keep watching to the end of the video so that you can get to hear all of the tips to help you get better sleep. Or if you're in a rush, you can use the timestamps below to go there straight away. I'd like to give you more detail on why you should make quality sleep a priority for your health this year. Firstly, what is sleep? Well, sleep is a natural state of rest for the mind and the body, and it's essential for the proper functioning of the body and the brain. Looking at our first book now, in Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, he's a university professor of neuroscience and psychology. He delves into the wild and wacky world of slumber. And according to Walker, sleep's not just a chance to drool on our pillows and snore like a freight train, but it's actually essential for our physical and our mental health. So yes, it's true, sleep is crucial for things like getting our memories laid down, regulating our mood, keeping us alive and well, but it's also great for repairing and rejuvenating the body and the brain and keeping keeping our immune systems in top shape. Unfortunately, many of us are sleep deprived due to modern lifestyles filled with long work hours, late night screen time and irregular sleep patterns. And this is messed with our natural sleep rhythms leading to the recommended seven to nine hours of sleep per night becoming a distant dream for some of us. But it's not just about the quantity of sleep, the quality of sleep really matters too. And Walker talks about the different stages of sleep and their importance, like deep sleep, where the body gets a chance to repair, and the REM sleep, which is key for learning and memory. And let's not forget about the impact of sleep on our mental health. Lack of sleep has been linked to conditions like depression and anxiety. It's also important for the development of our kids and teens. So it's never too early or too late to start cultivating good sleep habits. So in conclusion, Why We Sleep is a fascinating read and it'll have you snoozing in no time. Walker makes a convincing case that for the importance of sleep and offers practical advice for improving the quality and the quantity of our sleep. Next up, we have The Power of When, uh, a book by Dr. Michael Bruce, a clinical psychologist and a sleep specialist. And in it, he claims there are four main uh, chronotypes. And by that, he means four types of people based on their natural sleep patterns. And according to um, Dr. Bruce, these chronotypes are the lion, the bear, the wolf and the dolphin. So listen carefully to discover which one you are. The lion is a morning person. They wake up early, feel the most productive in the morning and start to get tired around 9 or 10 p.m. The bear is a normal person. They have a more average sleep pattern with a tendency to wake up and go to sleep around about the same time every day. The wolf is like a night owl. They naturally stay up late. They feel most productive in the evenings and at nighttime, and they struggle to wake up early in the morning. And finally, the dolphin is a light sleeper. They have trouble falling asleep and staying asleep, and they may wake up several times throughout the night. Now, according to Bruce, uh, each chronotype has its own unique strengths and weaknesses. And it's important to understand and work with your own natural sleep pattern rather than trying to force yourself to conform to a certain schedule. So for example, if you're a bear and you try to force yourself to be like a lion and wake up at five in the morning every day, you'll probably just end up feeling exhausted and unproductive. If you're a lion, you might want to schedule important meetings or tasks for the morning when you're feeling most awake and alert. 
But if you're a wolf, you might want to schedule those most important tasks for the evening when you're feeling most productive. Overall, The Power of Wayne, really interesting read. Just don't expect to suddenly transform into a morning person if you're a die-hard night owl. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. Please hit the like and subscribe button as that will really help me grow the channel so that I can continue to share more quality health information. I'm going to get to those sleeping tips after I review the next two books, but if you can't wait until then, you can use the timestamps links below. So the third book I want to summarize is The Circadian Code by Professor uh, Sachin Panda. He delves into the world of circadian rhythms and how they impact our daily lives. Circadian rhythm is the natural internal processes that regulates the sleep wake cycle and other behaviors of all living organisms. It's driven by an internal biological clock that is influenced by external cues such as light and temperature. The term circadian actually comes from the Latin word circa meaning around and diem meaning day. So it refers to the processes that occur around a 24 hour day. Like uh, Matthew Walker, Panda argues that our modern lifestyle with its constant access to technology, artificial light has disrupted our natural circadian rhythms and is causing us a host of health problems. According to Panda, the key to good health is to eat, sleep and be active in sync with the natural cycles of light and darkness. And this means eating during the day, getting plenty of natural light exposure early in the day and avoiding artificial light in the evening in particular. It also means getting regular physical activity, but not too too close to bedtime as well as getting a good night's sleep in a cool dark and quiet environment. He also delves into the science behind circadian rhythms, explaining how they're regulated with various hormones and genes and how they can be disrupted by things such as shift work, night work and jet lag. Throughout the book, Panda provides practical tips and tricks for aligning our bodies with the natural circadian code, such as getting a consistent sleep schedule, eating at regular intervals and getting outside during the day. So the final book, uh, Lifetime, by another sleep expert, Professor Russell Foster, sheds light on everything from why we snore to how to beat jet lag. Like the earlier authors, one of the most interesting things that Foster discusses is the impact of light on our sleep cycle. Did you know that actually getting sunlight can reset your internal clock. Just a few minutes of exposure to natural light early in the morning will help you get to sleep better in the evening. Foster also talks about the role of temperature, noise and caffeine on our sleep patterns. And if you're someone who's a hard time falling asleep because of racing thoughts, Foster has some tips for you too. He suggests trying relaxation techniques like deep breathing or progressive muscle relaxation to calm the mind and prepare for sleep. He also goes into looking at the weird dreams you might have and he explains that dreams serve as a number of important functions including helping us process and lay down memories and even allowing us to uh, solve problems. So the next time you have a bizarre dream uh, about chasing a giant hamster through the streets of Paris, just remember that your brain is probably just working hard to sort through all the information you've taken in throughout the day. Perhaps the most important takeaway from Lifetime is the importance of sleep itself. Foster argues that sleep is essential for our physical and mental health. And he even goes as far as to say that getting enough sleep should be considered as a basic human right. So you've probably noticed a lot of overlap between each of these books, and that's a good thing. They all cite studies and evidence for what they're saying. And it's not just memes that someone has shared online. I will now give you some tips and tricks that I've got from these books that has been tr transformative for my sleep quality and overall energy levels. So here we go. Firstly, making sleep a priority. If you're aiming for seven to eight hours sleep at night, you won't get that if you're only allowing seven to eight hours in bed because you don't sleep as soon as you go to bed and you also wake up during the night. So that's talking about our sleep efficiency. Most people will be about 70 to 80 percent efficient in their sleep so you gotta allow a schedule of maybe eight or nine hours at the minimum in bed tip number two is to get up at the same time every day because this is key to getting a regular bedtime if we get up at the same time every day you'll naturally fall into a more regular bedtime Tip three is all about getting the light in your life right early morning light really helps us to get ready for bed earlier in the evening 
Too much light in the evening delays our onset of sleep, particularly if it's a lot of artificial light, but not necessarily due to the light from devices and screens. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Tip four, having a wind down or relaxation routine where you can wind down before bed. And this can include things like reading, breathing exercises, uh, massage, oils, all those sorts of things. Tip number five is avoiding the wrong stimulants. At late at night, particularly things like eating or drinking too much fluid, including alcohol within three hours of bed and even exercise. I used to go swimming in the evening, but it used to leave me so wired up I couldn't sleep afterwards. Avoiding caffeinated drinks after 2 p.m. is also a great idea. Things like coffee will stay in your system for quite a long time. About that light stimulation from electronic devices in the evening, Although most of the health information online will tell you that blue light from our screens is really bad for us, more recent evidence is showing that it's not necessarily the blue light from the screens, but the stimulation that these devices cause before bedtime. That's because we are becoming more alert by what we're reading or watching. So it may be okay to use your device in the evening, so long as it's part of a relaxation technique or if you're using it to read or to use for meditations and things like that. I hope you found these tips helpful. There are just a few to get you started. I'd love to know in the comments below what techniques you use and which work and which don't work for you. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe and like buttons as that really helps me to reach a wider audience. Yours in health.